Hello everyone, I'm here with Danielle Heller from True and today we're discussing menopause. Um, so Danielle, could you tell me, um, how do you know when you're, when you're in menopause? The definition of menopause is basically when a woman's periods stop. Right. Um, so, um, and menopause, around the time of menopause, women may experience some changes with their periods. So they may become closer together, further apart, irregular, or the bleeding may get heavier. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, women can have symptoms of menopause. So there's um, hot flushes and, and night sweats, they're the yep. sort of typical ones mm. that women talk about. Mm. Uh, women can have sort of physical symptoms, so headaches, joint aches, back aches, um, vaginal symptoms such as dry vagina, yep. pain with intercourse or even urinary symptoms. Mm. Um, and also there's sort of mood symptoms. Again, women know a bit about mood symptoms yeah. with menopause, so <laughs> depression mm. uh, or depressed feelings, um, unloved feelings, mm. um, sleeplessness, low libido. There's, there's a whole realm of symptoms there isn't there really? yeah, yeah yeah and I mean as a, as a doctor I use a, a checklist so yeah. for instance the Australasian Menopause Society has a really good checklist um, and we score women so we give them a oh, score go yeah. through all the symptoms give them a score and it gives us a good idea of what mm. you know what they are before treatment if they yeah. want to look at any treatment yeah and what age do you generally start menopause the average age for menopause in Australia is 51 yeah. um, between 45 and 55 is considered normal um, 40 to 45 is, is early menopause and under 40 is premature menopause. Right, yeah. Um, and is there a way to have menopause confirmed so you know you're definitely in menopause? If a woman sees me and she's between the age of 45 and 55 and is typically having those symptoms of menopause, that gives me the diagnosis. Mm. So we don't, there are some blood tests but they um, they're not they're usually not required it's for instance women who say have had a hysterectomy and we don't know what their periods are doing mm. we may do um, a blood test if a woman's on um, a contraception and we want to know whether it's safe to take her off that contraception again we may do a, a blood test or a series of blood tests right. to confirm menopause so um once you start noticing changes um, and these um, symptoms you're talking about earlier uh, at what point should a woman see a doctor it's if the symptoms are causing a problem. So some women have very few or no symptoms, and it's what I've asked for for Christmas, it's yeah. no symptoms. But, yes. <laughs> but um, you know, some women have quite a bad time with menopause. Mm. Um, some women have very sleepless nights. They're getting up three or four times a night to change mm. the sheets because they're so saturated oh. from their night sweats. Um, they can't get through the day because they're so sleep deprived or having such issues with mood problems. Um, so I certainly encourage women to, to come in to, to see a doctor, um, mm. a GP, about, about their menopausal symptoms at that point. Women still uh, have a lot of uncertainty around what to is, you know, what's expected during menopause. What can you tell us? I, there are a lot of good websites out there where women okay. can get information. Yep. So um, I would refer women to the Australasian Menopause Society website. Okay. It's got some um, yeah, great handouts on menopause, the symptoms, mm -hmm. the treatment options. Um, also the Jean Hales Foundation website again has some good information as well. Women's Health Queensland wide is another women's health website. So if you wanted to go to true.org.au, um, we'll have the links there for you to go straight through to those websites as well. Yeah. Um, there is a question that keeps coming up in the community. Um, how long do the symptoms of menopause last? The, the average woman has symptoms for about seven years. Right. Um, unfortunately, seven, a long time. Unfortunately, 10% um, of women keep having hot flushes indefinitely. Mm. Um, yes. Oh, far out. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, do women still have um, to worry about contraception once they've hit menopause and once they've had that diagnosis? If a woman is um, under the age of 50 and she's had her last period and she's had no period for two years, then we can consider to be infertile and not requiring further contraception. Okay. If she's over the age of 50 when she's had her last period, it's only 12 months after that that we can be sure that she, she won't fall pregnant mm. and she can stop using contraception. Yeah, and once again, that would be you going in and having a, you know, a consultation with your doctor yep. to confirm that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all individual again, isn't it? What about hormone replacement therapy? A lot of women ask if that's a safe form of therapy. There are some risks with hormone replacement therapy, but they are low. So we do know and have known for a long time that women who are on, on HRT for 
four to five years or more do have a slightly increased risk of breast cancer. Um, there was a big study in the US that was showing evidence of increased heart disease and strokes with hormone replacement therapy. But um, what we've done with that data is had a look at different age groups and we're mm. finding that women under the age of 60 who are on hormone replacement therapy, particularly if they're on ones that go through the skin, so creams or patches, have no increased risk of stroke or, or heart attacks. Women who use it beyond the age of 50 do have a, sorry, the age of 60 do have a slightly increased risk of, of strokes and blood clots and heart attacks with, with hormone replacement therapy. And so that needs to be discussed with women when yeah. they get to that age is yeah. if life's not worth living without those hormones, yeah. then they're happy to continue. If yeah. they you know, want to try off it, then we would you know, certainly encourage mm. a, a trial off the hormones at that stage. Mm. But like you said, if they're really experiencing some fairly significant symptoms, yeah, they might choose to just keep going with it. For sure. And there yeah. are certainly women who well into their 60s and 70s continue to take hormones, yep. being aware of those risks because life is so much yeah, better with them. With them. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, and now, are there any natural therapies to treat menopause? Women like to use natural therapies, or yeah. often women start with natural therapies. Yeah. The, the problem is that... Um, with, with, when we do studies with, with natural therapies, the, the placebo rate or the rate of the number of women who will get an improvement on a pretend tablet is about 50%. So 50% of women mm. who are on a non-active sugar pretend tablet yeah. will actually have an improvement in their menopausal symptoms. So 50% of women who take an over-the-counter herbal wow. or other product, 50% will feel better because they've got mm. that placebo effect. Um, so when they compare, when they do studies on various alternative therapies or natural therapies, comparing it with placebo, they're not actually seeing a statistically significant improvement in women who are on the, um, you know, the, the alternative therapies as opposed to the placebo. Yeah. So there are, there are some alternative therapies um, that have shown improvement with mm. menopausal symptoms. So vitamin E, for instance, can reduce the number of hot flushes by about one a day. Oh, wow. um, so that can provide some women with benefit. Yeah. There's a herb called black cohosh that in some of the studies has shown an improvement in, in hot flushes. Um, not in other of the studies, but there are some studies that say that that can, can improve um, hot flushes, although there are some risks in terms of um, possible liver implications right. with black cohosh. Yeah. Uh, things like acupuncture, um, mm. so acupuncture shows an improvement in, in menopausal symptoms yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. And again, I suppose that's that individual thing where you would go and see your doctor and you'd discuss those yep. natural remedies and, and work your way through those. Yes. Yeah. So the other thing is that if women can't take hormones or, or don't want to take hormones for, for menopausal symptoms, there are some um, prescription medications that can be used. We certainly do use um, various forms of antidepressant medications oh. to reduce hot flushes and the mood symptoms of menopause. We use, um, uh, there's a, an anti-epileptic that is sometimes used, a blood pressure tablet that's sometimes used. So there are other options for women if, if they don't want to have hormones or can't for some reason have hormones to, to treat the menopausal symptoms. How interesting. And I suppose those things were accidentally discovered? But possibly, yeah. possibly, yeah. 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 It's so interesting because they're completely different types of... Yeah, for what they're normally used yeah, for. Mm. Yeah. Um, can, can women in menopause still have periods like clockwork? That, that time is called the perimenopause. Okay. So when women are having menopausal symptoms but seem to be still having normal periods, that's mm. called the perimenopause, so yes. Okay. So perimenopause basically means? Around the time of menopause okay. that within the next few Moving years their, their periods will stop. Yes. Yeah, okay. For some women with menopause, sex becomes painful. What, what can they do? There are um, various options for that. Certainly things like lubricants and vaginal mm. moisturisers can be useful for, mm. for intercourse that's painful. Mm. Uh, there are um, or even the use of, of oils like olive oil or sweet almond oil can oh. help with lubrication um, as well as, say, the water-based ones that you can get at the pharmacy. Um, mm. Some women need a, um, a, some vaginal oestrogen, so not hormone replacement therapy as such. It's a preparation, either a little pellet or a vaginal cream that gets used and that can improve the, the moisture and the elasticity and, and the defensiveness, I guess, of the, the vagina to... Um, the wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. to decrease pain with intercourse. Yeah. Um, there are, there's also the option of something called laser rejuvenation. So yeah, that's I've a, heard of that. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Another option for women. Mm. 
Thank you. No worries. That was that was very <laughs> insightful, and, and I really learned a lot today. And um, and thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions, further questions, please send them in, uh, and we'll chat further about this. Also, um, make sure you jump on to true.org.au. Um, they've got heaps more information there. And make an appointment with your GP because, like we were saying, every single person is such an individual, and you you need to make sure that you're um, having conversations with your GP as well. Thank you so much. See you next time.